Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. It's been a while since I've posted any content, so I just wanted to get a quick photo up and onto the channel to show you that I'm still editing photos and living life, just a little busy this summer. So let's go ahead and dive into the computer and edit a photo. Just a few days ago, we were dog sitting for our neighbor. This is their dog, her name is Maya. She was sitting on her bed and I said, hey, you know what, I gotta capture a few photos. So I went ahead and did exactly that. Now, what I wanna do with this particular image is make it a little bit brighter and then make the background stand out. So I'm gonna do two things before we get started. The first one is I'm going to change the camera profile from standard over to portrait because that just makes everything brighter as you can see. And then the second thing that I'm gonna do is duplicate this particular layer by clicking on the duplicate layer icon. And I wanna separate her from the background. And I also wanna modify the background in a different way. So this bottom photo, I'm going to label as BG. And then the top is gonna to be dog. Now on the top layer, I'm gonna click the masking icon. This is gonna give me access to the actual pixels, not an effect, so I can essentially cut her out of this layer. Now, there's a few ways that you can cut things out in On1. Uh, the first way that I'm gonna try is using the foreground tool, which seems to do a pretty decent job, and I don't need like a perfect cutout of, uh, of the dog. So I'm gonna go with the foreground option here, and I am going to click paint in, I believe is what I want because I want to keep all of that and everything else. I want that to go away. So I'm going to hit apply. And what should happen is it keeps the dog and let me turn off this background layer. So it keeps the dog, but it gets rid of the background. Now I should clean up this area down here, but because of the effect that I'm going for, I'm not really going to be doing much down there. And if it becomes an issue, I'll go clean that up and, uh, later on since I have access to the mask. This is a non-destructive way of editing, so it'll all work out. But I wanna go ahead and bring the background back into play here. And now I wanna do all of my edits on the background because I wanna naturally make her stand out without having to do too much editing to her. So this means the background really needs to get darker and I also want to put this bright spot right behind the dog. So that way it can and maybe add a little bit of color. It'll make sense here in a little bit. So the very first thing that I want to do is just pull down on the exposure and you see how that's already separating her from the background and maybe just a little bit more. I don't need to pull it down a whole lot. Uh, because I still want the overall image to be bright. This is just helping with that initial separation. I'm not going to worry about contrast, but I will pull down on the blacks and push up on the whites. And that is going to build contrast into that background. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see that it's really modifying the overall look of the background. Now what I need to do is add in that little flare that I was talking about, or at least that uh, spherical uh, separation item. I don't know what to really call it, but you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna do that with a local adjustment, and I'm gonna hit the letter M on my keyboard. That's gonna bring up the masking bug, and I want M on my keyboard to bring up the masking bug, and I'm just gonna click right here in the center it's going to put a huge vignette because right now I am on negative exposure, which that's okay, but this is doing the opposite of what I actually want to accomplish. So what I'm going to do is click inside of the uh, shape area and click on edges. This way, the effect is happening on the inside. So if I hit the letter O, you can see wherever the white is, that's where the effect is going to be applied. Wherever black is, the effect is not going to be applied. Now what I wanna do is reset this because I don't wanna necessarily bring down the exposure. I might bring this up in a little bit, but what I really wanna do is paint with a color. And I'm going to click that 
click on the palette here so that way or the color selector so that way I can select a color I'm going to use the eyedropper and I am going to select a color off of her this way it kind of blends in with her so it doesn't look like I added something but it'll make sense uh, when you look at it in full context so what I'm going to do is just drag this out because I want this to be a little bit longer and you see how I'm already starting to uh, lose some of that background uh, it was a little distracting and that's actually the main reason why I'm doing this particular technique now this isn't the final look I just need to get this in position where I want it to be uh, and make it look just how I want it to and this is the power of using layers inside of a raw photo editor uh, Let's go ahead and bring this down and then I'll feather it out a little bit more. So we'll make it a little bit tighter right behind her, maybe even a little bit more narrow. So that way it goes out that much and then we'll feather it out this way. And I think that's going to work out just the way that I want it to. So now what I may need to do instead of using a solid color because that looks a little bland and I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm going to go with classic and what classic does is it allows you to paint with the color, but you also get access to all of the tone sliders that you would have access to inside of the local adjustments. So I'm going to brighten this up and you can see how that's just adding in a little bit of, of a pop right behind her. I like what it's doing back here, but I don't see enough of it over here. So what I may need to do is make this a little bit larger so that way I can get that to pop a little bit better. And maybe that will work. We'll see. And th there's a lot of trial and error with this particular method. So if it doesn't come out the way that I expected to, then, you know, that is what it is. I'm going to modify the midtones here, maybe pull up on the highlights. Uh, that's not really doing much of anything. So highlights, not not a big deal. But the midtones seem to really impact the area here. So I think I'll go with that. Let me turn this off. And then if I turn it back on, you can see that you're starting, or at least I'm starting to build a little bit more of a dynamic background. Uh, you could absolutely leave the background alone as is, but I felt that the background needed to be modified just a little bit. So the next thing that I'm going to do is add a color overlay to the background to really help her stand out. And that you could do in a few different ways. The way that I'm going to do it is by using a photo filter and if you've seen any of my content, you know that I use photo filters to really modify uh, the color of things all over the place. So this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Now, like I mentioned before, this area down here is not being affected because it's still a part of that overlaid layer. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to deal with that because I really only need this effect to start like right around here. So what I'm gonna do first is hit the letter M to get my masking bug, click on the linear top preset, or I'm sorry, linear bottom preset, or uh, linear gradient, if you will. And I'm just gonna click right where I need that to start to transition. And you see how it evens out everything down here at the bottom. Essentially what it's doing is it is blocking that color filter from impacting the photo at the bottom of the image and allowing the filter to come through all the way up to, to the top of the image. Um, I have videos that I talk about how linear gradients work if you're not familiar with that, but if you got a question, leave it in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to help answer that. Now with that being said, it's time to change this color because I don't want it to be blue. And I'm not entirely sure what color I want it to be. Maybe a warmer color because I want to make this a slightly warmer image. Uh, so maybe something 
in this ballpark. And it's fairly, I mean, it's not subtle, but it's just changing the focus in the background to be a little bit more, uh, to help Maya pop a little bit more. Now, that I have my background where I need it to, uh, or where I want it to be, it's time to make modifications to Maya and enhance her, so that way we can really uh, make her pop in this image. So I'm gonna click on the layer that's titled Dog, and with this layer selected, I'm gonna start with the Develop module because that's a good place to start with balancing uh, what it is that you want to get out of your tones. Also, I've already masked Maya out of the image, so every adjustment that I make is gonna only really affect her because she's the only thing that's in this layer. So I don't have to worry about doing a local adjustment or anything like that uh, unless I wanna get more detailed into just her, if that makes sense. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, again, brighten her up just a touch. I wanna add some structure to her because I think that that helps a lot by adding in some structure. And then I'm gonna mess around with the whites because I wanna see where I start to lose detail. And cause she is a white dog and I kind of want her to get like this, this bright glow effect. But at the same time, what I don't wanna do is lose her detail. So I'm just doing a before and after to make sure I'm not losing detail on her, which I don't think I am. So I'll leave that alone. And then I think it's just a little too bright, so I will pull down on the exposure here. And we'll contrast this by adding in some blacks, so that way she's a little bit more uh, contrasty, right? If you pull the blacks down, pull the whites out, you start to stretch your tonal range for this particular uh, layer. So I think I got everything where I need that to be. I may warm her up just a little bit. Let's see what it looks like if I move the temperature slider. Yeah, now she looks more like a, a, a beige dog and that's not true to life, so I don't wanna do that. So we'll pull down uh, the temperature to the left just to cool her off a little bit so that way she's not uh, too, too white or too brown or orange or whatever. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is start to work on her eyes and then maybe add in a few highlights so that way uh, she looks a little bit more pronounced in the overall photo. I'm going to click local to do this and I am going to click on lighten. I'm going to add in a little bit of structure and then all I'm going to do with a brush and it's going to be a brush about the size of the eye. So that's actually perfect. I'm just going to click once and click again. So now I've punched a layer through. I have two little circles that are bringing in a little bit more light as well as a little bit more structure. And if I turn this off and on, you can see that the eyes, they just pop a little bit more. And that's kind of what I like to go for uh, when I'm editing dog photos or portraits of a dog and now what we can do is let's put an overall LUT over the final image but what I need to do is merge both of these layers into one file and to do that I have to have both of these little bubbles checked and then I can right click on the top layer and I can do new stamped layer now, this is no different than when you're working in Photoshop and you're creating a stamped layer or a uh, merged layer where all of the layers below get merged into one layer so you can edit everything all at the same time. That's essentially what I just did. And I'm just going to rename this merged. So now what I can do, what where the benefit comes in with this, is I can just come to my effects tab and then add a LUT. And LUTs are an amazing way of just combining colors because uh, we, we did kind of modify two separate tonal uh, ranges 
And this is not the LUT that I would go with, by the way. Uh, let's try something that's going to give us the aesthetic that we want. And obviously, these are way too strong for what I'm really looking for. Uh, and this one might work. Uh, let's go ahead and pull down on the opacity until it gets to a place where it just makes sense for the overall image. And then maybe come over here to the develop, expose it just a little bit, maybe move the midtones, because I do want this to be a fairly bright image, but I'm starting to lose detail there. So I am going to reset that. I don't want to lose the detail in her hair or her fur. So maybe uh, this is not the right look. So let's find something. Maybe this one will work. Got to pull down the LUT. And you know what? The other trick to using a LUT is to change the color uh, filter, or I'm sorry, the, the blend mode. And I like to use color as my blend mode. And what that does is it only applies the color and it doesn't change any of the tonal values. Uh, so it, it really helps with making your photos look a little bit better and receiving that color a little bit more. So if I turn this off and on, it's a subtle look. I'll crank it up just so that way it comes through on YouTube um, to make sure it comes through on YouTube. But in my final image that I post to Vero, it's going to actually be uh, reduced because I don't want too much of this effect on the particular image. But if I turn this off, turn it back on, I think both ways look great without the LUT and with the LUT. You let me know in the comment section below which one you prefer, the LUT or no LUT. Now, if you're looking to pick up a copy of On One Photo Raw or anything else in the On One store, consider using the coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20. I make a small commission off of every purchase, no extra cost to you, but it helps with bringing videos your way and it allows me to invest into this channel so I can keep helping you learn more about the software. If that's something you want to help me with, that's a great way. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.